Gautama Siddhartha, after his enlightenment, became Buddha. And then he traveled around the world with one statement, Appo Dipo Bhava. Apo Dipo Bhava means be a light unto yourself. In Indian scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, which is the Bible, which is like the spiritual science Bible. You know? If you say, I say for meditation, art and science of meditation is like a great Bible. It's like a handbook. Bhagavad Gita is a handbook for spiritual science. Uddhared Atman Atmanam. Atmanam of Sadhayed. Uddhared Atman Atmanam is there. Uddhared Atma Atmanam. So you have to take care of yourself. Your soul will have to take care of your soul. Uddhared. So these masters of scriptures are telling us that there's no somebody else will come and solve our problems. We, we all can guide, we all can give information, we all can advise maybe somebody else who's coming to us, but individually, Individually, we have to take care of our own, we have to solve our own challenges by ourselves at the end of the day. We cannot do the homework of somebody else. We all come here for an experience. So when we're here for an experience, and we know deep inside we're all this infinite intelligence. So we have that power to solve anything by ourselves. So we are for an experience and then we have the capability to solve our challenges through our own self. And meditation most naturally enables us to be, to experience that power. So we have the confidence to solve our challenges. Any problem, anything, we have to do our homework. We know that we will never want to do the homework of our child. We never want to make our children parasites on us. If we do homework of a child, if we keep on giving advice to a child before they even ask, what happens to them? Even at 25, 26, 30, they'll just never not have confidence in life. They'll keep looking at you. I'm looking at each parent. So, but we know that common sense wisdom tells us that if a child has got homework and then they're getting late, we are saying, I'll assist you. I'll sit with you. I'll teach you techniques of how you can be more focused and finish it. I'll give you the strength, but you got to do by yourself. That has to be the motto of every meditator. How do we otherwise see that the person doesn't come back to you again? We have to navigate when people are coming to us. As meditators, we develop powers. We guarantee develop powers. Intuition powers, healing powers. Many faculties will open up. But we guide. We are always people wanting to take help and advice. Give them help and advice. Start with meditation. That's what I had seen. All roads lead to the Rome. So when we look at it, when the transformation is happening in all levels, people are able to heal. So there is no doubt by now, at the end of four weeks, that meditation is the cure for all. That's why Kath Kesar is also writing a newsletter. Cure at all levels. So it becomes very natural. It becomes obvious choice to navigate, to guide people. 
to by ourselves number one first we ourselves do we have to do our home homework to solve our problems in the rare and exceptional cases particularly healing is he is there only in rare and exceptional cases healing is an easier pill it's like a pill you want to just get a short term benefit quick benefit people don't have time wanting to invest 40 days to understand and then heal themselves dramatically don't have time so they want some quick fix so they go to the healers go do this do that but once we understand there is something called meditation of course it, they are ignorant that no there is not they didn't know that there is something called meditation it is okay but once we know it dear friends it becomes we have to question ourselves even though i know healing even though i have i can easily give a lot of counseling and advice even though i have a lot of money i can readily give a lot of money is that what you want to do if you give money tomorrow they'll come back and say sir i don't have again today so can you give more if i give advice the slightest of the problem they're going to come back immediately so we keep again spending time so we indirectly don't realize that what we are making so many people parasites on us they keep depending on us we have to look at and say when we understand meditation is helping me to solve my problems with my own all my challenges my own self then can we enable them empower them with this tool so they come to us less and less and less instead they go and help more and more people isn't it so appo deepo bhava this statement when i was practicing in 2002 3 4 5 because the social media is not there those days only pamphlets and patrizia ensured that every pamphlet i used to see this be a light unto yourself be a light unto yourself it caught my attention it is a very powerful statement this meditation takes 2 minutes to teach 2 minutes to learn who cannot observe the breath you know that the teaching is so simple so there is no prerequisite required by now we all know it we all can teach anybody including our drivers our maids our helpers of course our colleagues you know that so friends we have to just start it this is the solution first we we take it we do our homework as much as possible there is a problem okay let me open that book conversation with god if i have immediate health challenge okay let me look at you heal yourself by louis hay what is she saying let's look at that i have financial issue okay so let's read what joe dispenza is saying about manifestation healing has to become the last last resort there is always of course exceptions are there in the path of in the path of guiding in the path of helping or even ourselves we we take that as the last resort we don't take it as the first resort because then we will not we will not even have the confidence next time and it comes then again we go into the somebody else isn't it we take it taking advice keep taking advice now what happened for example in the covid time there are people when they were in the final stages the moment they are in hospitals family members in many cases were not allowed to even see them talk to them and in many cases family members were so fearful they didn't want to even go and then see them or talk to them both were there so if in the whole life if we now have not overcome the fear of death and if he always felt that okay i have to continue and then you think that no the all the people are taking care of me now at the last minute it is such a poor sad situation in fact i knew some relatives in my family too they just couldn't go in some cases i was like it is baffled own sister people were just not going so 
So then if what happens, if, if that is applied to us and if we felt that everybody is going to be there by my side during the last moments, then nobody is going to be there. We got to overcome, we got to understand there is grander life beyond this life and overcome that fear of death. Gita whole chapter is dedicated for this. If the life on the other side, when we read Peter Rich Lilu, the soul's journey, we understand fully how grand the life is on the other side. So we absolutely will be able to gain that knowledge to understand and then overcome all fears. We can solve all problems. We have guides, we'll take, we have mentors. We go to the guides, but we do our homework as much. That's a, that's a message. We do our homework, we do our homework. Let's be a sincere student of understanding the subjects. And then of course we'll have questions. Of course we want validation. Of course we want guidance. Confirmation, some large addition will take me one confirmation. I'm starting this group business. I'm going to invest in a nonprofit. Yes, we got to go to we got to go to Ramani sir and ask and say, what do you think it can go? How, what should I do? Take that, but do our homework. Can't be the first hat, drop of the hat, go and then ask for a solution. We've been conditioned that way. Tirukkural has written some great poems around children. If, you are, if a child is, child lacks confidence is because you as a parent has given him help unasked. Has given him help unasked. There are some 20 such uh, stanzas are there. If a child is doing tantrums, because in public you, you have uh, 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 yelled at them. If you do in public ill at them, then they do tantrums. There are a lot of things of how children, because a lot of times we are just giving help unasked. Help unasked is a big no-no, number one. Just because we understand, we just don't have to keep on giving suggestions, suggestions, suggestions. Because everybody is learning. The idea is everybody has come for an experience. They're learning on their path. They fall. But they get up. But in the falling is where all the uh, challenges are learned. I mean, yesterday, Thangaviraj has spoken so beautifully. If Abdul Kalamji was saying, look at the failures of people and then how they overcome it. Because that's when a lot of, all the challenges initiated into greatness. So that means we learn a lot, right? We know that. So we have to allow imperfections to happen. We have to allow failures to be there. Look at it as an be equanimous to things. Only in this absolutely where, you know, you, you, it's going to be irreparable damage is where you feel that, okay, you have to help. If a child is walking into that fire, then yes, common sense wisdom tells that we don't ask them. But many, many things, everything else is not like that. Everything is not like that. But most of the time we think our children are, you know, our students are our uh, um, junior colleagues are going to make a grave danger by doing this and then we just readily tell because we've already been there. Then when will they learn? They'll have to wait for that another opportunity when you do not exist around then that knows that they're going to learn from it. So dear friends, it's not only healing, it is also giving or taking advices. Message is be do a homework. It's important. We read the books. We understand everything. We have the, we'll gain the knowledge to solve. Spiritual Science Magazine. You know, this magazine, I just use it so greatly every day. There is a Spiritual India Magazine. The Patriji is spending so much time every month, at least four days. This is about Spiritual India. Great personalities of India are produced, introduced. Ravindranath Tagore. There is spiritual India, there is spiritual science. Sylvia Brown, Louis Hay. She's written so many books empowering individuals. I think one of the books we are reading also. You heal your life. 
in the book club by Shantapriya. So this magazine, Spiritual India, Spiritual Science, is introducing masters every month. One master, Western master, one Indian master. Great masters. We learn from all of them. And every master always had their own challenges. Who doesn't have problems? I have problems. Small people, small problems, big people, big problems. It's not rosy. Grass is always green on the other side and look from far. But we all know everybody has a problem without an exception. Every businessman has a problem. Jews, smaller, smaller problems, bigger. We know we're reading so many in the newspapers. Loans and this and that. Everybody has a challenge. So challenges are always their difference. Meditation is our best savior. And meditation, using meditation, we solve our problems. We use our mentors, but we don't do the homework of everybody else. Uddhari Atman Atmanam. Atmanam Bhavasadiyet. So this is that meditation we practice every day, which is empowering us completely. So shall we go into this meditation once again? Relax yourself, sit comfortably. We are doing breath mindfulness meditation. Anapanasati. Our goal is to empty ourselves. We are body, mind, energy. When we observe the breath, we empty our mind of all thoughts and we become that energy. Energy is universal. It exists everywhere. It is that intelligence, the greater mind, the consciousness. So when we observe our breath, empty ourselves, become one with that emptiness and then experience that whole, that larger self of ourselves. So we are doing this called breath mindfulness. For that, the posture is simple. We close our eyes, remove your specs, fingers into fingers, rest your hands comfortably in your lap, cross your feet, cross your feet, rest your hands comfortably in your lap, close your eyes, observe in breath and out breath. And before that, we are doing a heart elevation process heart elevation, where we want to fill up our heart with heightened emotion of love, gratitude, compassion, just follow my guidance actively in that. Relax yourself. Okay. So we completed four weeks, we are into our fifth week. We wanted to cover very important concepts about purpose of life and creative way of living. Spiritual science can be understood in six principles. There's law of consciousness that exists everywhere. Then there is a reincarnation, then law of cause and effect. Then there's law of constant progression. There's law of yoga. And then finally, the law of infinity. There's consciousness exists everywhere. From nothing comes some everything. Then there is continuity of life. But we understand that we are this energy field and the consciousness which is seeding those thoughts or the mind is outside the body. And so it always exists because it moves back as an energy and then so energy to mass is always there. So it always exists. So there is continuity. And then cause and effect as our thoughts and feelings create reality there's always an effect for every cause we do. Cause and effect is always there. It is most natural will not a imposed by somebody, but it's more of a free will based cause and effect is there. We can explain why somebody is in one way, why someone is feeling this way, why someone is going through suffering and this and that, because everything ultimately is cause and effects driven by our thoughts and feelings. And there's constant progression. Just the way we do not want to experience the same thing that we experienced already in our life. If we've gone to 
Goa five times, we want to go to some other beach place, not Goa again. So there is constant progression because we, as a nature of the soul, a nature of the reality, we always want to experience something new. So always there is progression, there is never regression. And then there is this law of yoga or meditation where the moment you take meditation into your life, then it becomes catalyst. And then so everything that we experience becomes multiplied. Life is good, but the moment meditation is added, everything we experience is multiplied. We enhance experience. We develop the passion for whatever we do with a lot more vigor, enthusiasm, and I live it. Then finally, then as we are living a life as that infinity, as that divine, as that God, because God is nowhere, it is all with us. Ambrahmasmi Tathvamasi. So it's all this, so we live the life of a divine when we become meditators. And then so everything is grand, everything is great, everything is celebration. So then law of infinity is all that exists. The law of infinity says there are infinite things, infinite worlds, infinite creations, infinite happiness, infinite enjoyments. So when we recognize that we are unlimited, then we start experiencing life in many, many ways. And that's where the creativity comes in, dear friends. Creativity and innovation are as fundamental to experience more. And meditation is developing that cushion significantly into us. Meditation is naturally developing the creative quotient into each and every one of us. Let's understand this creative ability that we develop as we become meditators, as we are becoming that growth-minded persons. So creativity is doing new things are doing things differently. Whatever we do, even if it is cooking, we want to try it differently. How many times we want to make the same pasta, same brinjal viran? Can we do something different? How many ways we can cook a curry? We know that. How many ways we can cook something? There are so many ways. So many ingredients are there. How many ways we can go to an office? How many ways we can greet a person? So there are many, many ways we can do things differently. The moment we understand that if we are here for to seek new experience, because every new experience gives new happiness, and the moment we understand that there is no limit to what we can experience, then we start looking at things differently. We start doing things differently. Whatever the process that you're doing at work, you always want to optimize, improvise. So either you, whatever we do, we do differently. If it's a manual report, you want to automate it. If it's a tabular report, you want to give a graph. Improvise it, constantly improvise. Not because somebody else is going to gain, but because you yourself will have a different experience. It'll be boring. It'll be boring. If you run something on autopilot, then we should better be then doing something totally different. When we say, I put everything on autopilot, it runs automatically. I don't need to be there. It's great. That means you feel yourself off from a, a repeated activity. That's where this whole robots and automation come into picture. It's fine. Then we, free up ourselves to do something larger, something new. We have to find ways of doing things differently. Since it's all as founded based on new experience is driven through new learning, life is about experiences. So the more we learn, the more we new experience to come. And then as we're learning, then we feel that new knowledge, so we apply the new knowledge to create something new.
when we have to go to Himalayas, I mean, when you go to a new country, a new country, we will be so much, it's called going into the unknown because we are going into the unknown. We constantly have to keep it unpredictable. If we go into an unknown, when you go into a new country, let's say you're going into Chile. Since the place is different, the culture is different, the process is different, system is different, we'll be so much alert. And we go in there, we don't know. So we're alert and then we almost always, we say that when you go to the first time in any place, we gain so much of, so many new experiences. We remember it forever. Every time we do something new with that heightened awareness, we remember it forever. We experience it so much more. Anytime we do something different, for example, for 30 days, if we are locked up in home, and only one day or two days, you did something very different. Let's say you cooked some new dish, or you did a special gardening where you got a plant from a neighbor and then planted it. Guess what? For the next three months, the only thing we talk about, just go back and recollect. The only thing we talk about is about that new dish experience or that new plant thing that we planted. Everything else, nothing to talk about, it's all the same. We ourselves, we enjoy so much anything new we do that that's what becomes the talk for us for the next few days. Because the nature of a soul is nature of ourselves is to constantly experience new and then relieve that new experience. That's what we do. So then dear friends, we use this opportunity to Whatever we do, we break the routine and then experiment, constantly experiment and revise and revise anew. In organizations, creativity is in the people. People, we have to reskill ourselves, constantly learn something new. We cannot become complacent because you become that expert. And then you become that expert, then okay, everybody comes to us. So we get stuck into it. Then we don't even do anything new. It becomes boring, repetitive. Last time to this time, I put this slide up. I felt, you know, bright, vibrant colors is good for creative innovation. So we put some of these pictures. Creativity and innovation, there is no time of when you can start or end. You know, so many of the great companies, they got started pretty late. Pretty late in the game, the founders have started like in the 50s and 60s. So it is not for only youngsters, it should be for everybody. When we say, I'm restarting, I'm starting a new ending, which I'm passionate now about life more, then we take up, there's no, we break the routine. We cannot get used to and say, because people have advised me that I have to do this at five o'clock and six o'clock and seven o'clock and eight o'clock. We do all of them, but do some variance. You know, when you go for the walk, if you change the timing of the walk, you perhaps meet new people just by changing the timing of the walk. Every day you meet one, and then maybe at six o'clock you go, then you meet 10 people at seven, maybe you're meeting a lot of angsters. Maybe they talk about meditation. Maybe they talk about the project you're looking for help. We vary in, we vary things so that we break the routine, we vary things. We bring in enough unpredictability into our life so that you know, we can keep on having newer experiences. Oftentimes we try to make it very predictable. We make it very predictable. Planning is necessary, but being open to that unpredictability is important. So one can innovate and create, do things differently. I'm going to office every day. The only thing I have to do is to give reports. Why not do the reports differently, develop there is so much of technology is there. So get yourself, uh, get your hands dirty with technology. Why not? This whole world, modern world is about technology. So we, there are so many tools in the technology, by the way. It's so easy these days to even put up a website, five minutes, 10 minutes it takes, only if you have the interest. So much we learn. So we got to get ourselves a little bit, little bit about technology so that that report that you're doing can easily be made into a beautiful graph. All it requires, I'll tell you, to all those beautiful graphs, some of them we showed, it requires just filling up a few information in a table. 
we all can make a table, right? Columns and rows, and then just pull up information. And then one click and say, okay, I want a circular graph, it'll come. As simple as that. There's no thing that we have to sit and draw and then in a table and feed all the information, no. Just put a table entry that we all know, anyway, we're writing it manually. Put that in the computer table entry and then click and say, I want a circular graph, it'll come. Pie chart, bar chart, all this come. Very, very easy dear friends. Computers are demystified. So when we learn computers, then we actually can do many more things. Easy. So whatever we do, we can enhance by learning new things, technology and products. We don't become complacent. When I came into IBM, honestly, we didn't have to in innovate. Because whenever a company, a smaller company is bought by a bigger company, then the big company wants to milk the technology, right? And you got a technology, we got a technology and we were selling to let's say 50 or 100 clients and this large company takes it and then sells it to 100,000 clients. Same thing, right? Software. Software is just to you know, make copies and copies, copies, right? There's no other cost. So they expand it and then sell it to many to make money, a lot of money. So we, our job was to integrate and see that it can be sold to many and then supported by many customers. We didn't have to innovate the core inside that was already built, but we didn't stay. We as a lot of our team members, we didn't stay complacent and say, anyway, all it's going to do is they're going to grow it. And then we are done, so we can walk away. But we felt as a team that for us to be continuing for the next three, four years to be happy, enjoying, and then uh, enjoy that work life and we go there every day, we got to take up and then expand it. It is our initiation to expand it. Nobody was asking us because we already had a lot of features. That's why in the first place, IBM bought us. We had a lot of features, we're ahead of the competition, so they bought us, but we didn't stay there. We expanded, we looked at a vision and said three years from now, five years from now, where are we going? But today, if I have to be doing the same thing again that I've been doing, it's boring. So our team, took up on the next thing that you want to do. Just so that we can be happy, we can experience something new. We want to make a meaningful contribution. Today it is good, but then five years down the line, three years down the line, it becomes obsolete. So you want to do it. But today it gives me happiness. In three years down the line, it gives a greater growth to the company. Both are, it's a great win-win. So creativity, we got to keep on doing new. We got to take new initiatives because we recognize that when I do new things, I get new experience, I get newer happiness. Meditators don't want to get into boredom. You want to kill the time. You want to pass on the time. Getting comfortable, working in the comfort zone is not an option because comfort zone means that zero learning. Safe. Nine o'clock, okay, shut all the lights, windows, doors, just go to bed. Why not? Why not? If there is a beautiful night out there, the full moon night, why can't we stay, take a walk? Just saying. I'm sure many of us are doing it, but this is something is important, dear friends. Anything can be done. You know, this Amazon, that whole creativity with which, the context with which, you know, things get things given to us, they made this whole shopping experience so simple, right? They're the pioneers. The world, of course, is following pioneers. Just one single search bar, Google, one bar. I distinctly remember in 99, there is another search engine called Alta Vista, which was very popular then. But this Google came with one bar, that Alta Vista page was full. I said, what, one bar? And that's all it takes? But today this company is this unthinkable. Connecting people, I figured, actually thrives and grows fast because again, this is part of the nature of the universe. When we connect, when we become one, when we bind people, they always seem to be growing. Always seem to be growing. That's why many education institutes, with all knowledge, with all connecting, they either share knowledge or connect people, these companies always seem to be eternal and grow in general. Binding people together, bringing people together, they're enabling people. 
great business to be in if anybody wanting to start think about it how can i enable people with more knowledge or connect them together come together facebook google any social media platform connecting people together is just growing thriving what is innovation simple innovation google was a simple innovation with so much depth behind it was an amazing technology so innovate we can innovate many ways dear friends meditation is helping us why innovation why do we stop innovation because we fear failures isn't it we are used to this comfort zone because that's what we've been taught comfort make sure that you got it all covered planned and then make our life all boring routine monotonous plan and plan and make it very very fixed is because then you know, we feel survival right now we always think that okay there is what happens after retirement what happens after if i don't have this job there's survival thinking because we've been taught that way that the world is limited so what meditators are breaking that and saying if i am that infinity i am that power then where is the question of uh, we not surviving we work up the fear of death and say okay it's okay if not this time then the next lifetime there is more there is a continuity is there fear of failure so what if somebody makes a comment at me why should i bother with i want to try that bulb that thomas alva edison could have brought it out if he felt that you no know, these people would take me and say okay so what a failure thousand times and 999 times he failed and they're still trying kept going because he felt every time he tried something he is mastering he is refining the process of getting there so we lose the fear of failure number one we lose a fear of meditators lose a fear of failure so which means that they are ready to take take risks they want to try new things naturally it comes dear friends now with this meditation then if there is any older thought it's time to break it try it new if you had new ideas and always felt that people are not listening to you go back and apply it now again try it out and see because now that you have enough thought power you no longer have this fear mentality or doubt mentality then you will actually go forward in implementing your idea since we have less stress meditators have less stress we understood this right in the second week so less stress so naturally there is absolutely cognitive functioning is working quite well our creative power our cognitive decision making by putting multiple information together into so that we get new insights all that is working so well so we become more creative that hippocampus expanding long term memory is expanding so you can actually synthesize from various information it becomes because you also have to remember many of your past experiences right from there you can derive some and then of course you're receiving insights through meditation is another But the past experiences all stay together when you have your hippocampus growing which is a long term memory meditation is enhancing it significantly isn't it so how do we innovate growth mindset is all it is in the last week in the spiritual question they talked about we go from a limited mind to growth mind fixed mind to growth mind neuro rigidity to neuroplasticity so few things that we recognize my abilities are not fixed i can improve there is no fixed my abilities right i don't have enough i'm i don't have enough capital i don't have that skill i can't take it we change with a new understanding that i can improve always i have improvement for me we don't run away from challenges we face challenges because challenges face create a lot of opportunity for us to do new things isn't it when in a crisis situation we always come with a lot of innovation right think of it india is not producing masks but under crisis when that call was given so many went and then produced became one of the largest suppliers of masks right under crisis we innovate new many people learned cooking innovation during the covid time knew how to polish the dishes as you're cleaning my friends laugh at me that i say a lot about dishes and cleaning i did it for a few days everything is one is taking care really with a lot of some of the helpers so innovation we don't run away from challenge we face the challenge dear friends then a lot of innovation comes out automatically comes out because we give everything for a new experience 
take criticism to improve do not ignore do not run away criticism critics i, I talked about one of the day we all have a petty irritant there are always critics take criticism because if critics are not there then the only people who are saying ah oh, you're great you're great you're great you're great you're great complacency steps in we don't learn critics are always good to see the thing that we don't want to see by ourselves we don't want to see by ourselves that's why people become mirrors take inspiration so you know this is very important right whatever that you want to have take inspiration but don't feel threatened by people at office right if suppose a colleague gets an award you feel ah, i don't know when i'll get it oh is this lucky that is not inspiration feel inspired when you see kartikeyan say very feel inspired i don't know when i can become must be lucky man abdul kalam and kartikeyan are lucky man they have just had lot of luck with them it's not for me we take inspiration from them because they also for example we heard from tangaveru ji yesterday from a humble background it became so big we take inspiration but we don't feel threatened the threatened word coming from many of office environment where we feel threatened if a colleague or somebody is growing in an environment that our neighbors are growing we can't see it so don't feel threatened we take inspiration dear friends one is called prosperity thinking another is poverty thinking i don't have it they have it is a poverty thinking or oh, they have it it's great it's as good as me having it and so i enjoy it and experience it prosperity thinking move away from survival mode to a creative mode constantly be in that survival wanting to for me protect me take care of me me and mine survival mode i have to feel safe i have to play it safe in the environment because his boss doesn't support it that company doesn't support it let me just play it safe we see a lot of mistakes happening we don't want to talk about because it's okay somebody will take care not me friends this is growth mindset means move from survival to creative mode move from feeling threatened to and taking inspiration from others do not take criticism don't take a, go away from it ask for it feedback i mean say criticism ask for feedback and then take it to improve of course you'll be prudent enough to ask from the right people do not run away from problems face the challenges and then constantly be aware that we have this unlimited capability so we can improve we are not fixed nobody has got an ins well, only ins is not the only one who got the brain all of us have it you know with meditation with our heightened emotion we upregulate the genes science says that we are only using 1 and 1/2% of the genes are there about but upregulate the genes to produce new proteins and then so if we construct the body in a way different ways many people have done it so many things are possible dear friends so meditation i'm ra- wrapping it up meditation is helping us innovate and create by being open listening to a heart mornings you stay open don't fill up your mind with a lot of things mornings you stay open when you stay open as soon as you wake up and you know, brushing your teeth there's always something is coming to us information is downloading great way of creating great way of taking those insights and making that help that's called taking the help from other uh, from the higher intelligence a lot of people when they go into this bliss state you know when we are going to that bliss state empty state that's what we are doing we are receiving downloading information which often is going to help us to do things differently new insight new new courage use that we want to be always open the only two things listening to heart which is about connecting to this intelligence and then second is be open in the worst situations if you are in a client meeting and the client really shouts at your face and say don't show me again your face how many times it happened to many of us right don't show me your face don't waste my time yet we don't give up we stay open to the possibility okay maybe today is not any, maybe there is some challenge maybe it's not my day today i didn't do well maybe he had a challenge or she has a challenge that's why she shouted like that at me but any possibility exists a wave of infinite possibility exists tomorrow the same client can turn around so don't lose the hope then hold on to it be open and we are open dear friends 
things turn around. Always. You can also see them as tests on your path of meditative journey. You see them as tests. There are challenges will come. Keep on new experience will keep on be presented to us so that we see how we overcome them. Many times meditators say, I'm, I'm meditating. Suddenly all kinds of problems are coming to me. Yes. We want to enjoy that. We want to be happy in every moment in a blissful state. If that is a wish you've taken, which is like the one, the most, most widest uh, imaginable, to be happy every moment is to be enlightened. And then if that's what we're wishing for, of course, we have to go through a lot of experiences to gain, right? Some transcendentally, but many materially. So we get that. But face it and then be, be, be with it, right? Be open and then don't just conclude, make conclusions. Don't conclude. At that point, you want to make a conclusion, it's fine, but stay open. Next day, the person can change, situation can change, the place can change, and many things can happen. The client will still come back to us, dear friends. So being open and then being receiving, connecting to the emptiness is a great way of improving our creative quotient and then enhance our life significantly. Thank you so much. Karthikeya, sir, your closing comments. And accept criticism to improve. Don't resent it. Criticism is not for condemnation. We criticize, you know, with, with good intention. And very often we do that only to those whom we care for. So they should not take it as a, it's a, it's a point for, and take inspiration from others. There are beautiful statements, powerful statements you make. Asivisa, your comments on this? Innovation, creativity. To start with, you know, I want to remind a proverb in Tamil, Nandrum Thidum Piradvaravara. That means either good or bad, it is not coming from outside. It is coming from ourselves. So you started with the Appo Bibo Bhava, saying yourself, uh, Buddha, be a light to uh, yourself. Creativity is one thing, as you rightly said, you have to decide what is your goal. Some five years back, all my 10 years or 15 years, I've been always thinking every year one project, either a new project or expansion of the existing project. I've been continuously doing it not that without, without challenges, many challenges. Just to mention one to sort of eight, you know, 1991, there was a cavalry dispute. Oh, yeah. Where all... Okay. Hello. Yes, sir, go ahead. Please mute Srikant, please. Yes, go ahead, sir. Where all, you know, Tamilians will have to go out of uh, Karnataka at that time. I have been putting in my factory in Nanyan Good at that time. So what happened? All Tamilian labor had to go out. All my factory set to go into production another three months. All those materials, motors, roof seats, everywhere were being taken away. For three days since that happened, I was not able to think of what to do. Then came to my mind, unless I do back the factory, my life in the industrial field is over. Nothing more. That was my second factory. My second factory. After that, I have put a lot of other things. So I decided, yes, I'll have to wake up. After third day, I said, I'll have to wake up. Then I pulled wires with different areas from Bombay, from Delhi. So many people. At the level of governor, the level of uh, you know ministers, at the level of chief minister of Karnataka, home minister, DG, and so many. This is a big story that uh, that if I take it will take a lot of time to explain. And after that, I revived the factory, and uh, today I can tell you that is one of the best factories in uh, the southern Karnataka. That way, challenges will be there. You must have a goal. You should not be on the sustaining mode. You should be only on creativity. That creativity for 15 years, I've been going on either putting up a factory, expansion, a new projects, like that I was going on. And I was able to do that. 
where I always think, as I usually say, the sensitive, you should be sincere. Yes, you are not doing anything wrong. You have been following Satyam, Dharma, in your doing the things. When you are like that, following that, that you should not have any fear at all. You should not have any fear at all. Then the hard work. Hard work means smart work. Then after that, perseverance. Perseverance is very, very important. You should never feel let down. You must always see to it that you are going to succeed. And if you do that, yes, we can do that. The only my present thinking is, had I known this meditation, had I undergone this meditation during those periods, my life would have been much, much happier. It would have been still better. Maybe it would have been more uh, healthy and peaceful. And so many things I could have achieved. So I think uh, the benefits of meditation, uh, there's no limit. It is unimaginable. It is unique. I think uh, we, we should try to expand. You, know, you should try to, to bring it to the whole world. So the world become a very happy place to live. Uh, that's what I would like to say, Mr. Chandra. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I think your message, you've been always, uh, every growth, there is a new experience. And I think you never stopped. You always wanted to continue, continue on this wonderful, great uh, message for many businessmen out there who are probably thought this is enough. At the end of it, we are, you're contributing back. It's all contributed back in a significant society. So friends, we learned more during this week on purpose of life. We learned about creativity to enhance our life experience. Wednesday and Thursday, Friday are dedicated for purpose of life. But tomorrow we have, there'll be a feast. There'll be an inspirational talk by Padma Shri, Dr. Ramanisa, founder and managing trustee for the Shankarai Foundation on pursuit of excellence, Tuesday. So we'll stay connected back again at 6 a.m., do our meditation and then listen in to the messages from uh, Dr. Ramani, sir. Have a great day. We'll meet back again tomorrow. Thank you all. <laughs>